Hey there folks, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create animated menus inside of InDesign. One of the things that you'll need to do this um, is under the window menu interactive and then we need to preview what this will look like. So that's EPUB interactivity preview. Now when I open it up it's going to look really small on screen and that's pretty much no use to anybody um, and it will work. I mean you can see in here I have already put rollovers onto things in the menu but you can hover your cursor over the outside of that bottom right corner and drag out and make it bigger in there. So as you can see here, this is what it would look like. Now the menu is omnipresent. You know, it's hiding one fifth of the presentation page and that will be the same on all the pages. Now I want this to be hidden and then opened and closed with a button trigger at the top right hand side of the page. And my suggestion for this is that, you know, don't keep minimizing this and then opening it up again and closing it down. When you get this preview window to the size that you need, hover your cursor over the tab up here, drag it across to the side of your screen and just dock it in there when you see the little blue square. And then when you need it, you can click on it. It stays at the same size. When you don't need it, click and make it go away. This menu needs to be on every page. Therefore, uh, I have put it onto the master page. So if you can see in here, um, the whole of this menu, this navigation in here are essentially these are just text links that go to different pages of the same document. Now it's all one group. If I click on that, again, you will notice here in my layers panel, I tend to have all my buttons and interactive stuff in a layer of its own called, well, interactive. And if I expand that open, you'll see in here that I have things like this. This is a group. So if you see here, if I drag it, all of the text and the box move at the same time because that thing is called menu. And if I expand it open, I have Philippines, New Zealand, Rockies, Scandinavia, contact and rectangle. That's the rectangle in the background. It's all inside of a group that's called menu in there. Now you can rename these and I'll show you how to do that in a second. It can be helpful because when you come to um, anime or when you come to identify buttons with the options we're going to use, it's helpful if they're named appropriately. Um, just hidden behind this is a button to go to the previous page and the next page. If you want to figure out how to do that, um, that's in another video. The link is at the top of the screen now. So if I just put this back to where it needs to be, it's final resting place on screen. Um, then uh, what we need to do is open up two more panels. So we need to go to window, interactive and open up the animation panel and we'll put that there and then window, interactive and buttons and forms. So first and foremost, what we need to do is um, we need to create a trigger to open the menu and then to close it. Now that has to be done with two separate buttons, unfortunately. Um, first and foremost, these are just, again, two separate groups in here. Um, and um, here you'll notice that mm, this tells me that it's this that's selected. So if I click on that and just left click gently on that, it will allow me to change the name. So that I'm going to call that one close, press return this one is the open button. So if I click on this, one, click again gently on that one, um, that one's open um, like so. So they've been named. Again, they are just groups. They are just artwork at the moment. So the other thing to bear in mind is that you'll have to have any buttons that you're going to use have to sit on the page because until they sit on the page, InDesign doesn't acknowledge that they exist in the buttons and forms panel. So that's why we have to move them onto the page and not on the pasteboard. First one in here is the open button. I'm going to click on the type drop down menu. Let me just bring this next to it. So change that to a button. Give it a name. This is going to be called open. Press return. And then when I click on this, it's going to trigger an event. And I will add that in afterwards. I'm going to click on the close button, which is just a piece of artwork at the moment, and then turn it into a button and call it close. And now this one is going to be hidden until the menu opens up and then this button will disappear. So for now, the close button will need to be hidden until it's required, hidden until triggered. So that's all done. Now we have on this page three buttons that we that are really interested in, the open, the close and the actual menu. So if I go back to this one, my trigger is going to be click on the action and it's going to be show hide buttons and forms. So when we click on this one, it's going to animate the menu open, but we also need to make sure that this button disappears. In here, show hide buttons and forms. You get a list inside of here. And what we need to do is the open button needs to be hidden when we click on it. So click on the X, which means no change. One click will make it appear. 
which it already will be, but if I click on it for a second time, it will hide that element when you click on it. We also need to make sure that when we click on the open button, it close, it makes itself disappear and it will reveal the close button. So they'll share the same space on screen. You click on it and it'll instantly change to the other button. So that's all good for now. I need to click on the close button and I need to add the trigger for this. So I add the action. So this again is going to be show hide buttons and forms. And from here, we're going to hide the close button and we're going to show the open button in there. So that's key really. And that's all because we have to do the opening and closing of the menu with two separate buttons. Unfortunately, that's pretty much how I found over the years it has to work for this. Next thing is we need to animate the actual menu itself. So if I move my buttons and forms to the side and then bring this one closer, select my menu, which the name is taken from the layers panel in here. Notice this one's called menu and then I'm going to choose a preset. So click a little drop down menu in here and I want this to uh, fly in from the right. When I click on that, it gives me a little animation path in here and you get this little butterfly symbol in here that shows you what it will do. So this is going to uh, fade in from the right hand side over a duration of one second, which is fine. Um, now that will automatically appear on screen for every page when the page loads. So it will happen on page load. Now we don't want that. What we actually want to do is to go to this symbol here and we want to pick the thing that is going to trigger that animation. So if I click on that, it turns into a target and then we hover over the button, but we want that to be the trigger for the animation. So if I click on that now, if you then notice that it deselects the menu, so it's click back on the menu and in here, you'll notice that under events, click on the drop down menu. It will now <laughs> open that on the page load and on a button event. So if you see on page load in here, just hover over it, click on it and it'll remove that. And now it will only appear when we click on a button, not when the page loads. It's a very important step in there. With that then done, if I go back to the close button, this one now, um, I am going to not use the same technique, bizarrely enough, but I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to choose under EPUB only. So that's for EPUB documents or publish online documents animation and under animation, it will detect if there's an animation on this page and it does. It says, oh, there's an animation applied to the thing called menu. What do you want to do? Do you want to play? No, we don't click on that. We want to choose reverse. And what that will do is it will hide the menu. So it just plays animation backwards. Perfect. So, well, in theory, so now what I need to do is move that. And then I need to get these buttons, move this one like so that's the close button get my open button in here now just move these here and make sure that i want this i want the open button to be at the front um so that's good and they're going to share the same space so they have to be sharing exactly the same space on screen you can't preview this on the master page you have to double left click on a page number in there and then what we have is if i go now to my interactivity EPUB. I'm going to press stop and then I'm going to press play. So it opens up. We now have the menu up at the top. This will obviously we're not interested in these two buttons at the moment, but if I hover over this and left click, the menu appears and it animates on screen and it also hides the open button. If I then go back here and click, it hides the um, close button and it reveals the open button in there. So that's why, unfortunately, so go back in here, click appears on screen, click on there and it disappears. Now, at the moment, the animation is fading the opacity of that. Now, at the moment, it's not too good because we can actually see those buttons fading in the background. So I'm going to choose to come out of this, go back to the master page, click on the menu itself, and then you'll notice that in here, We've got opacity fading. I don't want that. I want to choose none. Um, and then um, under speed in here, we can choose uh, ease in. Click away so that it'll just appear on screen nice and gently. And then if I go back to page one, go back to the preview, you will have to press stop just to be sure and click, click on play just to reboot that page, so to speak. And so here we go again. We go hover over here, click and it appears on the screen like so. Come back, click, 
and it goes back again. So if you want to alter the timing of that, then you can do. So if I go back to my master page, hide this preview on screen, click on here under menu, then we can have duration. We can have that set to now when you tap up, it will move, uh, it'll increase or decrease in 0.25 second increments in there. So um, one and a half seconds. Let's try that. Um, under speed, ease in and ease out. I think that would be better because that would allow us to have the animation easing in and easing out for when it opens and closes in there. So that's probably better. Click away from that. Go back to page one. Go back to the preview. Press stop and press play. And then here, click on this one. It eases in. Click on this one and it eases out inside of there. So that is how you can create an animated menu that shows and hides on screen. And it will only appear when the user needs it. You can hover over the links in there, jump to whatever link you need to be going to. And then when you're done, click on the X in there and it will disappear. Thanks for watching, folks. As always, if you're not a subscriber, do click on the subscribe button and you can click on the bell, get a notification every time we post on this channel. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and it helps me reach more people to help them hopefully save some time. And until next time, farewell.